Thank you for your warm introduction. I'm Mr. Park Chang Ha, Senior Manager of KDB, X XTC Korea ASEAN uh, competition finalist, uh, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. I'm incredibly honored uh, to speak to you on the occasion of XTC Korea ASEAN regional competition here at the 21st World Knowledge Forum. I take this opportunity uh, to show my appreciation to today's co-host, World Knowledge Forum, and uh, try everything. And my special congratulations go to XTC Korea ASEAN Regional Competition Finalist. You are part of a select group of entrepreneurs <coughs> who are harnessing innovation and technology to address uh, global challenges. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as the startup ecosystems of Korea and the ASEAN countries are <clears throat> continuing to attract increased global attention, I'm happy to meet today's exciting startup leaders who are advancing global solutions alongside innovative uh, growth. The young and dynamic ASEAN countries with 60% where 60 of the population is under the age of 35, have been recording steady economic growth each year pre-COVID-19. Indeed, this region is emerging as an active player uh, in the startup market where the United States and China are currently dominating. The high rate of smartphone usage, internet skills of young people, enhanced regulatory reform, and the support of governments have created an environment in which young leaders like the ASEAN, <clears throat> in the ASEAN countries have the opportunity to explore a new business to activate impressive startups. As a result, Unicorn companies such as Gojek, vehicle sharing company, Grab, travel platform, Traveloka, and Bukala Park, the Amazon of Southeast Asia, have been created among others. Korea is also prominent in the global startup market, ranking sixth on the list of unicorn company owners. As the startup ecosystem is steadily growing, global conglomerates such as Google and Microsoft are showing elevated interest in fostering Korean startups. This is because Korea has high growth potential based on solid technology and the institutional support of the government. As such, the passion for startups continues to rise in Korea and the ASEAN countries. Particularly, all of you who have gathered here today are realizing social values for the common prosperity of humanity and introducing new technologies in connection with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the 2030 Agenda and its Sustainable Development Goals, 17 goals, is one of the United Nations' uh, most significant achievements. I can proudly tell you that, not because this was adopted during my time as a Secretary General, but I can tell you, in the name of all the member, st member states of the United Nations, that this is by far in 70, 70th history, until during that time, the most far-reaching and most uh, ambitious vision the United Nations has ever presented to, to the world's people at any time. United Nations has been speaking and making a lot of ambitious uh, agendas, like a Millennium Development Goals in 2000, but this has not been met. And now we had made it clear that by 2030, then there should be nobody 
who is suffering, who will suffer from abject poverty. There should be nobody who will be out of school. And there should be nobody who will have to die needlessly from preventable diseases. These are something like uh, poverty eradication, education, water, energy, inequality, hunger, climate change, human rights, public health, peace and justice, and gender equality, and lastly, the global uh, partnership. I have not named all 17, but just naming all these means cover every, every aspect of human being as well as our planet Earth. In that regard, I'm very proud that it was adopted upon my recommendation. Of course, negotiations and consultations. You, many of you, and including myself, uh, must have attended many concerts and operas. And at the end, uh, there's always a big applause, standing, standing ovations. But I have never seen such extended standing ovation by the world's political leaders. There were at least 150 presidents or prime ministers and a lot of representatives of youth group, including Malala Yousafzai, the Nobel Peace Laureate. And there were almost 300 young people just asking for world leaders to do something better for their future. This is what I can, that's why I'm, I have become a missionary of uh, a sustainable development course. I'm wearing uh, this one always. You will see me wearing this one wherever uh, I will be in the future, check, check about that. In any way, then five years has passed already. This is 2020. What's the score record of implementation, of performance of the member states. I am not happy with the member states, including Korea, my own home country. They're not doing much as expected by the world's people like uh, yourself. That is why I'm, I'm sitting and standing with you together today because you are the ones who will really play a role as locomotive in pushing this. As a Secretary General, I have been uh, speaking out that uh, it needs to have um, global partnership. Partnership among governments, private sectors, represented by you, and civil society. These days, uh, civil society plays a very important role. That's why I'm very happy. Uh, you belong to civil society as well as a private sector, business group. You are the most ener energetic and dynamic young leaders on whom we really depend upon. You may not have much hope on me. Then what's the score is that, that there is a German uh, foundation called uh, Bertelsmann's Stiftung. This is uh, Bertelsmann's foundation <coughs> who checked the country by country, according to their report, uh, there, um, they checked 160 or 70 countries, not all 193, uh, but among them, uh, there are, they have found uh, 20 well-performing countries from one to 20. But they, all these 20 countries belong, mostly belong to European Union, European countries. There are four non-European countries amongst those are Canada, New Zealand, and Japan, and fortunately, Korea. So these are four non-European countries, but Canada, New Zealand, Japan, they are all almost like the European, almost the same. Yeah. Western, so-called Western countries. The Eastern country, real meaning of for Eastern country is just um, Korea. Japan is number three economic power in the world. So they, they 
play and they act like Westerners, Japanese people. I don't know whether Japanese are here. They regard themselves. So then does it make that Korean government, Korean people should be happy with this? As a former Secretary General, I'm not happy with what the Korean government is doing. They should, they should and they could have done much better, much better. This is what uh, I'm really asking, particularly Korean, uh, Korean entrepreneurs here. As you are well aware, social impact refers to products of meaningful positive change on socially urgent and important issues. And therefore, government and a variety of investors such as yourselves and global companies are paying greater attention, greater role to start up, attention to startups with innovative technologies. They recognize that companies with a social impact are capable of sustainable growth by creating positive social economic values. Korea and ASEAN countries have achieved rapid economic growth. And behind it, key challenges such as a home income disparity, environmental population, and the climate change remain. These are all critical global challenges which require a global and sustainable response. When I was just a mid-career officer, diplomatic officer, and the Korean government, we were very proud that all ASEAN countries' national GDP combined was equivalent to that of South Korea, my country. But now, can we be, can you, it has changed. That means while South Korea has made a lot of progress, but ASEAN 10 countries have also made a greater, a greater uh, you know, uh, stride. We cannot compare that like that way. Sometimes Koreans were very proud. Well, we can add up 50, uh, 53, at that time 53 African countries, and we almost uh, equal South Korean economy, equal to 54 African countries combined, but no way these days. While Korea is number 12 or number 11 or number 13, we belong to up to 12, 12th. But now each and every country, even developing countries, they have done a lot, a lot of progress. So we have to do, particularly we have to do uh, all together in a sustainable and uh, uh, equal way. Now, I firmly believe that we can tackle these uh, challenges and help achieve sustainable development by harnessing innovative technologies on the basis of a fourth industrial revolution. We have every tools, science and technological development, innovation, fourth industrial revolution. For example, smart grid, local energy solutions, real-time traffic management, water management, and smart technologies with all enable our future cities to be more effective. This is important at, as urbanization uh, continues. However, it's not enough for cities to be smart if they only cater to affluent professionals or young people or those who are able-bodied. Rather, future cities must be underpinned by inclusivity for all, young and old, men and women, rich and poor, citizens and migrants. I, in a metaphorical way, I have been saying that, uh, well, cities, cities are the culprits of everything bad, everything bad. Poverty is with the cities, and crimes, health issues, 
and refugees. And something bad are always happening and residing with these cities while cities are growing in terms of its size. But that means we are not living in a sustainable cities, sustainable cities. And therefore, I am really urging the government leaders to, first of all, plan the cities in a sustainable way uh, for future purpose for everybody. With this in mind, the challenges that you are currently undertaking will become the seeds, seeds of future innovation and produce the social impact which can enrich our world. Under this backdrop, the 2020 XTC Korea ASEAN Regional Competition of the Extreme Tech Challenge XTC, which is the world's largest social innovation startup competition, is an incredibly fitting forum uh, for the leaders of tomorrow to be able to unleash their full potential. I strongly believe that it will provide a great opportunity for everyone in taking a step forward in the global market. I hope that the, through this competition, all of you can present forward-thinking solutions to deal with the social problems of humanity on a larger, larger stage and eventually grow into the next unicorn in the field of social impact. For this, I'd like to ask you for two elements, the persistence and cooperation. At the moment, we are facing an economic crisis due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As such, we are unfortunately experiencing a market freeze at a time when active intervention in the shared sphere of social impact are all in the more required. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me uh, conclude. Uh, despite uh, our current difficulties, if we center our recovery from COVID-19 based on inclusivity and sustainability, new opportunities will arise too. Areas such as healthcare, bio, information, and communication that combine related technologies are rapidly em emerging. I have been urging the government as a former Secretary General, it's important, it's inevitable that all the governments take urgent economic recovery, sustain, sustaining, resuscitating economy. It's okay. But do not lose the longer vision, longer vision. Do not put like an issue like a climate change in the back burner. You can spend money, but this money should be spent in a sustainable way to address, first and foremost, in addressing climate. We have to see a bigger picture rather than trying to gain short-term political gains. The, most, the tendency of most of the political leaders, they always working for the votes to maintain their regime. This is what I'm terming as short-term political gains. You are, you are young generation, you have a longer vision, the Korean government and investors will spare, will have to spare no efforts in supporting Korean and ASEAN countries to lead these new industries. And this competition will be mutually beneficial to, for all of us. You hold the keys to unlock a more innovative and sustainable world through your talent. So please center your efforts and your vision based on global citizenship, not on short-term short gains. That should be based on 
United Nations vision, United Nations goals, which are well included in 17 Sustainable Development Goals, and particularly Paris Climate Change Agreement. I'm confident that your technology, your brilliance, and your know-how and experience will contribute to a better future for all. And let us work together, ladies and gentlemen, to make this world better for all before we will have to regret for our succeeding generation. We have, to, we have a moral, political responsibility uh, to make sure that our succeeding generations will be able to live in a much, much better future for all. I thank you very much. Come